Hi friends, welcome to Plexus Ortho. This is part two of the splints in orthopedics for NEET PG exams. So we are going to discuss uh, the lower limb splints and tractions today. So even before we begin, we need to know what is the difference between a splint, a slab and a cast. Splint is basically a prefabricated material which is used to support a part of the body. So be, and uh, that is called as a splint. So and what is a slab? A slab is made of plaster of Paris calcium sulfate half H2O which is used on one surface of the limb or body. It is not circumferential whereas a cast is a circumferential plaster of Paris all around the body and this is calcium sulfate half H2O circumferentially around 360 degrees of the body is called as a cast whereas a slab is on only one side and a splint is a prefabricated material which is used to support a part of the body or limb or do a specific function. So this is the difference between splint, slab and cast. So let's begin with lower limb uh, uh, splints. The most important splint which has been asked very frequently in your exams is the Thomas splint. The Thomas splint is initially used for uh, tuberculosis of the knee and hip joints. Now currently it's most commonly used for femoral shaft fractures for emergency splinting of the limb and uh, it has two um, uh, rods one is the inner rod and one is the outer rod the inner rod is straight right and that's how you recognize the inner rod the outer bar is uh, having a projection here and this projection is because to accommodate the greater trochanter on the lateral aspect of the thigh this accommodates the greater trochanter in the lateral aspect of the thigh the angle that it this uh, inner rod forms with the ring or padded ring is about 120 degrees all these questions have been asked before the most common indication for a thomas splint right now is a femoral shaft fracture temporary immobilization of it um, it was uh, initially used for tb of the hip and all other kinds of pathologies and uh, remember it has an inner bar and outer bar the outer bar has a bend in it to give uh, accommodation for the greater trochanter the angle is 120 degrees don't forget that Next we have the bowler bronze, bronze splint. This has also been frequently asked. It has multiple pulleys. It has at least three pulley systems. There's one pulley here, there's one pulley here and the third pulley is here. So there are multiple, multiple pulley systems in this and uh, you can put various kinds of weights and tractions in the splint for femur, tibia and all kinds of lower limb fractures and injuries. So this is called as bowler bronze splint. How do you recognize BB splint or bowler bronze splint? When you see a, a tray or a traction system with three three pulleys on different directions it is called as a bowler brown splint next coming to the dennis brown splint uh, all of us know where this is used this is used in ctv congenital talipo equivarus or in club foot cases so once you finish your treatment that is once you have finished casting and manipulation I, or you have finished the soft tissue release or you have done some kind of osteotomy then to maintain the position of the foot you have to use the Dennis bronze splint for a further additional two years in the initial six months to one year you will have to use it 24 hours and then you can use it at night time only so you can see there's a bar connecting between these two shoes there is an external rotation of the shoes of up to 70 degrees and this tries to maintain the position of the foot in the corrected position for as long as possible and this is called as DB splint or Dennis Brown splint frequently used after the correction is obtained in a club foot or a congenital talipo equinovarus. Then we have the foot drop splint. The foot drop splint is used in case of common peroneal nerve injuries where the tibialis anterior and the extensor hallucis longus and the extensor distum longus are affected where the patient is not able to dorsiflex the foot. This is very commonly happens in trauma, it very happen, commonly happens in Hansen's or leprosy and in these conditions you have to give what is called as a foot drop splint so that the patient can keep the foot in neutral position and otherwise what will the patient have? If you don't give a splint the patient will have what is called as a high stepping gait, high stepping gait. And when does foot drop occur? Most commonly it occurs after, after a common peroneal nerve injury and uh, uh, injury to the tibialis anterior which is responsible for dorsiflexion of the foot, injury to the extensor hallucis longus and extensor distum longus which are responsible for extension of the toes. So these uh, muscles when they are affected it causes foot drop and that is where you use the foot drop splint. 
then we have the gallows traction again this is historical in perspective but unfortunately it's, it's commonly asked in your neat pg exam and therefore you have to remember this it is a memory based question and uh, you have to remember it very clearly and a gallows traction is basically used for children maybe less than 12 kgs in size or less than 3 years to 4 years in age where the, you have a box traction box traction is, is use a crepe bandage around a kind of a tape to give traction right and then you make sure that there is enough weight or traction here so that the buttocks of the child is just elevated above the cot so what are the things here you use a box skin traction that is you use a crepe bandage or some kind of tape around the around uh, a belt of uh, foam and uh, this is hung over a, a pulley system with weights just enough weights to lift the buttocks off the bed so gallows traction is basically used for fracture of the femur again very historical in perspective because nowadays we use either hip spica in, in younger children or you can use a nailing or some operative technique in older children so this is historical in perspective but please do remember it gallows traction used in fracture femur similarly we have a modification called the bryan's traction where you pay, pay you elevate the distal end of the bed and the traction occurs in line with the pulley system so it is not as cumbersome as the gallows traction it can be used in slightly older children but you'll have to keep the child in the bed for at least four to six weeks till the fracture unites and therefore this is cumbersome and also again historical in perspective and it is rarely used nowadays so gallows and bryan's traction for fracture femur in children gallows in very young children bryan's in slightly older children maybe four to five years whereas gallows is between one to three year old child then you have the russell traction it's also a modification for the use in case of fracture femurs and this is a pulley system where box traction is used this is used in adults and uh, older children where a box traction is a skin traction where the crepe bandage is used over a tape here and uh, enough weight is put so uh, so that there is a reduction in the fracture here so you put in the traction and then get an x-ray and make sure the fracture is a fracture of femur is reduced adequately so this is also get going less and less vogue uh, right now so we are not using it very frequently you may find this in some government hospitals when you're doing your internship uh, but gallows and bryant's is almost never used so you know we always uh, russell traction may be used sometimes in older adults where surgery may not be a pos possibility so these therefore these three things that is gallows bryant's and russell's traction is used in fracture femur then we have couple of splints for congenital dislocation of the hip for congenital dislocation of hip less than six months old child you can do what is called as a pavlic harness this is a few tapes and velcro strap and belt which is used to keep the hip in abduction congenital dislocation of hip is less common in indian children because the mothers tend to keep the child on the side and with two hips uh, one hip anteriorly and one hip posteriorly therefore it's a natural abduction mechanism for the child whereas in other societies they do not do that and they keep the child in the arm or swaddle the child and therefore there is no abduction of the hip and therefore they have a higher chance of congenital dislocation of the hip and uh, pavlic harness does what indian mothers do so therefore pavlic harness keeps the hips in abduction and helps in preventing the adduction of the hips or dislocation of the hips and it is very useful in infants less than six months of age so remember pavlic harness is used for congenital dislocation of hip then we also have a similar splint which is called as a von rosen splint made of some plastic material or aluminium material this also keeps the hips in abduction so when you keep the hips in abduction the the hips go inside the socket and mold the acetabulum and the dislocation is reduced so in congenital dislocation of hip less than six months of age children you can use either pavlic harness brace or you can use a von rosen splint and both of these are the right answers for treatment in children less than six years of six months of age then we have the box traction which is very commonly used you must be you must have seen it in every orthopedic ward box traction is basically to reduce the pain reduce the pain and uh, try and reduce the fracture as well correct the fracture and also in the intervening period from admission to the time of surgery we can use this box traction so box traction is basically uh, 
a kind of crepe bandage or some kind of bandage which is applied over a tape which is held over the edge of the bed with some kind of weight usually this weight is anywhere from 4 to 6 kgs of weight and depending on the size of the patient you can use an amount of weight and so this is very commonly used in orthopedic wards for relief of pain and in the intervening period when the patient is waiting for surgery or some kind of procedure this is called as Buck's skin traction it's called as Buck's skin traction and then finally uh, we have what is called as Perkins traction Perkins traction is like Buck's traction but it uses a steam and pin with a stirrup and a pulley system with a weight applied there so that this is a more uh, robust way of giving traction as compared to a box traction so you hammer a steam and pin through the uh, upper tibial region for a femoral fracture or you, st you hammer a pin through the calcaneum for a tibial fracture and uh, when you do this the alignment is maintained pain is reduced for the patient and when the patient is waiting for surgery he can um, um, and, um, you know the alignment is not disrupted and the patient uh, can be pain free this is used in the intervening period between surgery and uh, admission and surgery so this is a very effective way of uh, maintaining the alignment in case of uh, femur fracture so this is called as Perkins traction so I hope um, splints and tractions of the lower limb helped you uh, to understand this a little bit you have to remember it unfortunately for your exams thank you for hearing me out my name is Dr. Kanan Kumar and this is Plexus Ortho thank you very much